Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and welcome to episode 67 of Ask Bosk's Bounty. This is of course the weekly series where you guys ask me questions in the comment section below and I do my very best to answer them each week. Loads and loads of questions again this week. Thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode. That video actually hit over 10,000 views which is awesome for one of these episodes so thank you so much for that. I also want to say a big thank you to my latest Patreon, Robert Snedeker. Thank you very much for the support. And if you want to support this channel on Patreon, I need one more supporter to hit 50. And then when I hit 50, I'll be doing a monthly Patreon only live stream just for the Patreons, which would be awesome. So only one more. If you feel like supporting the channel, the link is in the description below. So thank you very much for that. All right then guys, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like down below and we'll get straight onto the first question. Daisy May says, what is one of the most wanted vintage collection figures from the Clone Wars TV show? Thanks for the awesome videos. So thank you for the question, Daisy. I guess it differs between people. Everyone has their own opinions, but if I had to pick a couple of figures that I would love from the Clone Wars, it would have to be a Sarge Ventress. I think that's a must. And also Bo-Katan. Of course, Bo-Katan has been in the Mandalorian since. So I would take it on either card. Cranky Rancor says, also have another query. I've been using a checklist for the vintage collection from Jedi Temple Archives, and they have had an airborne trooper listed as upcoming for a while. Is there any rumors on this? Cheers again, Adam. So I think that rumor stems from when Amazon accidentally put the names of a future wave of figures up for pre-order essentially. Usually they have code names, but they put the actual names and one of them was an airborne trooper. But I think what happened is that that figure ended up becoming Clone Commander Wolf and the airborne trooper rumor has just stuck from there. I don't think Jedi Temple Archives have sort of updated their lists. Hopefully I would love a new airborne trooper. That would be pretty cool. So maybe in the future we will get that. Andy McGlashan says, what do you do with your card backs with the figures that you open? Store them or just bin them? Yeah, I'm sorry, mate. I am one of those sad individuals that keeps them with the bubble sort of half off, if you like. I open them in a certain way to take the figure out. And yeah, I like to keep the card backs. I'm hoping I'm not alone. Josh Anderson says, hi there, boss. Old boy. Great Q&A. Thank you, my friend. Question, what vintage collection figure do you recall being most excited for and then feeling let down once you received it? So that's a difficult question, really, because, you know, often we see the images of the figures and stuff. So it's you kind of know what you're getting. But in these two cases here, in front of you here, we knew that R2-D2 was coming. And when the images came, they, they had him all dirtied up like that. And that was a bit unfortunate for me because I was hoping that he would be the clean version so he would match the vintage Kenner version. Not to be, so it wasn't a massive thing, but it was just a little thing that annoyed me at the time when we eventually got that figure. And then, of course, the other one is the Captain Rex. That was rumored for so long. And when they announced that figure, I mean, you know, everyone's got that, their opinions of that figure. It was a bit of a letdown because obviously it just came off hot off the heels of the Arc Trooper 3 pack. So I thought, you know, we're going to get a brand new Rex and it didn't happen. Dean Birch says, hey, brother, great videos. Question, which slave layer is better, the vintage collection or the legacy with the extra lower body seated part? And do you think Hasbro will re-release slave layer in the vintage collection? Right, so I'm pretty certain that they're the same figure apart from that you get the legs. So this one is actually neither of the two that you've just mentioned. This one is actually Sandstorm Layer. So if you want a cheaper way of getting Slave Layer loose, then I would try and get the Sandstorm Layer. Because you take all the Sandstorm outfit off and you end up with the uh, Slave Layer underneath. I do believe that the Vintage Collection 1 and the Legacy Collection 1 are exactly the same figures apart from that you can change the legs. So if that's the case, I'd probably say the Legacy Collection 1's better because it would be nice to be able to position her properly on, Jab on Jabba's throne, whereas I've kind of got her legs like that, which doesn't 100% uh, work, but it'll do. Herminator06 says, love your videos, Bosk. Question for next week. What do you think is the worst Star Wars action figure of all time? Man, there's a lot of candidates, to be fair. A lot of the Power of the Force figures would probably go into that category, all of those butch ones that are on steroids and stuff. And I'm probably going to pick one of those, to be honest. I think it's probably... I'm sorry, Princess Leia, but the Princess Leia from that line is, is a dreadful figure, it's got to be said. Also, this one. So this one was a mail-away figure. It came in one of these little white boxes here. And it is the Ghost of Obi-Wan. And... Let's face it, it looks like a tube of toothpaste. It's not great at all. Salford Nurse says, not counting Bosk, but do you think there are any Power of the Jedi 
the steroid Star Wars figures that either still stand up in regards to the sculpt, etc., or that you actually think are, are actually okay. Uh, yeah, so this kind of goes on from the previous question about the worst figures. So there are some from the Power of the Force and from the Power of the Jedi. So the Power of the Force ones were the really steroid ones. When they make the Power of the Jedi, they kind of sorted them out a little bit. They weren't so bad. This guy here, obviously, is from the Power of the Force. And he kind of holds up today. I mean, it's a good sculpt. It could do some articulation and everything. And I wish the mouth moved. But apart from that, it just looks quite good, doesn't it? If you've got a Jabba's Palace set up, he will, he will do fine. This guy, FX7, he is from the Power of the Jedi line. And this is a great figure. I think they repacked it in a Vintage Collection 3-pack. So if they were ever to bring out a FX7 on a Vintage Style card, I could imagine them just using this one. This exact one here, it's it's fine. And that's Power of the Jedi 2001, and that's Power of the Force. So I think it's mainly the droids that sort of hold up a little bit better. I'd imagine that 8D8 is a good figure as well from the Power of the Force. Ryan Byrne says, with Gina Carano getting fired from the Mandalorian, do you think her figures will rise? And if so, how much? I actually made a video about this the other day. I'll leave a link in the description below, and here's the thumbnail on screen so you can see it. I had to make a video about this because obviously what I was seeing was just absolutely crazy the prices people are paying for these uh, black series and vintage collection figures but if you haven't watched that video i advise you to watch that video because it is just amazing really what's happened in the last couple of days since she's been sacked galactic plastic says hey boss question for episode 67 why are some name pills written in black lettering and others in white sometimes even on the same color keep up the terrific content cheers from wisconsin thank you for the question my friend I, I really don't know the answer to that question. And it really is bewildering because, for example, this guy, General Lando Calrissian, which is actually a reissue card, VC-47, he's written in white. And I'm pretty sure, I can't double check, but I'm 99% sure that the first release of this, which is in a box somewhere in my loft, um, is written in black. So even on exactly the same figure and name pill color, they've, they've changed the, the font color. I have no idea it's got something to do with marketing and you know they probably have to get these things signed off but you're right that orange is exactly the same color as say for example uh, Leia Bouche or Bausch and she's written in black so I just do not know how they come up with that sorry mate Fantasy Brick says in your opinion what is one vintage Star Wars figure that you don't like but other people do great video and looking forward to next week uh, yeah, this has always been one for me. I, it's the Death Squad Commander. I never used to like that figure as a kid. It was grey. It had like a weird sort of round bowl cut hat or <laughs> helmet. It was just odd. And it was never really a figure that I played with too much when I was a kid. But I understand it's got a bit of a cult following in, in adult collectors. People like that figure. So I'd have to pick that one. My friend John from the Super Awesome Geek Show channel says, question for next time, not sure if you've covered this or not, but here it goes. What was the first figure you ever got as a kid? And do you even remember the first one you got? I do remember, and I think I have asked, answered this before on previous episodes, but it might've been a long time ago now. So it was a few figures. We, on, on one Christmas, I remember getting like Ben Kenobi, C-3PO, um, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo all at the same time kind of like in one present if you like you open them all up and or you open the present up and they're all there like folded together sort of thing they must have been on empire strikes back cards because it would have been around 80 81 when i got those ga says hi bosk's bounty are two questions for next week firstly do you think hasbro are purposely drip feeding us ot collectors the 96 just a couple each year to keep us waiting i.e buying i'm 36 but thinking i'll be retired by the time we get the full set Secondly, can you please put the who shot first nonsense to rest? Um, the second part of your question, Hans, I always thought Han Solo shot first. I believe some people think, as you've said in your question there, that he was the only one to shoot. But I just remember him being a, a badass and basically taking the first shot. In terms of the uh, 96, yeah, I think they will be drip feeding them. It may be more than two a year, probably be maybe four or five a year, hopefully. We're getting quite a few of them this year for certain, but... Um, it's one of those things, isn't it? I don't think they want to finish the 96 too quick because then a lot of collectors will, you know, stop collecting the line and they don't want that. Josh B says, great video and congrats on the 66th episode. Would you be interested in buying battle packs similar to the older ones, but with the vintage style packaging? Absolutely. If they brought back those like Ewok 2 packs and the scanning crew and things like that, I'd absolutely love that. It's a way of getting two or three loose figures all at once. That'd be awesome. And I do like those little boxes. So yeah, in terms of, 
when you say battle packs from like the sort of legacy era yeah they're good as well but as, as you say i would prefer them to be in in vintage collection style packaging james mclaughlin says hi boss question for next week what do you think of the new cal kestis figure and is is it a figure you will be looking to get so i think you're talking about the the new black series one like the sort of deluxe version yep i've pre-ordered that it looks great and hopefully we'll get one in the 3.75 soon enough following on from that question lukey d says hey boss question for next week with the announcement of another cal kestis in the black series line do you think that increases our chances of finally getting the character announced for the vintage collection i think it probably does increase the chances slightly not directly though i think what probably more enhances the chances is the potential gaming greats line that's coming to the vintage collection uh, as rumors have it so you know if they start knocking some figures out from previous games some troopers and stuff like that and the line does well then you could probably see a new figure entering the line uh, to supplement them someone like cal kestis would do very nicely gary mancini says hi bosk and little bosk love the show and look forward to it each sunday thank you very much gary question as greedo hammerhead and walrus man have appeared in the final season of the clone wars recently in their original kenner carded outfits I'd like your opinion on whether Hasbro might release these again in this style and whether you would prefer a Clone Wars or original Kenner style card back if they did. All the best, your friendly neighbourhood Spider Mancini. Well, Hasbro have released Greedo in the sort of Kenner style, haven't they, in the Black series. I'm in the mind if they want to do Kenner style figures and they looked great in the Clone Wars, by the way. Uh, they looked fantastic and it was, a great, it was great to see them on screen. But I think if they're going to do those, I'd rather them just be in the retro collection and just not be on some sort of sub line of the vintage collection. Um, so I, I wouldn't really, you know, it'd have to be the Kenner card back for me and just, just do the retro version. That would be absolutely fine. Vivian Pontes says, hey, Tim, since we're getting Maul and Ahsoka from the Clone Wars, do you think we'll get more from the show down the line? Would love to see a vintage collection Ventress. Yeah, we mentioned her earlier. Absolutely. I don't think we'll see many of them this year necessarily. Obviously, we're going to be getting Echo, I believe, on a single card, much like we got Fives. And of course, Jesse will probably be on the way at some point. But unless there's another wave announced, other than the ones that we kind of know about already, then I don't think there'll be too many Clone Wars figures. Maybe next year would be a good time to give us, you know, Ventress and Bo-Katan and lots of other figures that we need from the Clone Wars. 332nd Trooper says, is there any possibility of Darth Plagueis vintage collection figure? That would be awesome. I think there's every possibility of that figure is released in the, in the Black Series 3.75 and those figures are not off limits of coming into the vintage collection so who knows if they if they're allowed to do it still because he's expanded universe they were thinking about doing Revan so I don't see any reason why they couldn't do that and yeah I could see it happening. Alicio Bazan says great video question for next week do you think we will get a new Luke land speeder in the vintage collection and do you think we'll get dryden voss from solo anytime soon i don't think we'll get dryden voss anytime soon i think um the you know the focuses are elsewhere uh apart, you know they're not focused on solo essentially uh vintage collection land speeder again i could see that happening if they redid the luke skywalker farm boy that would be good you know and i don't think it'd be a new release they'd repack the previous land speeder that we got maybe give it a slightly better paint deco but that that vehicle in itself is great already so um I could, but yeah it's the sort of thing that they could easy, easily re-release star wars toy mania uk says great q a tim question for next week if you had to choose one play sets or mini rigs man that's like that's like asking me to choose between one of my children man that's oh that's hard uh, i would go mini rigs and that's purely because when i was a kid i had more of the mini rigs i think i only had one of the play sets i had the cantina I didn't have any of the Hoth play sets or anything like that, but I had all the mini rigs because they were easy for parents to buy for their kids because they were a cheap little vehicle or whatever. So yeah, I'd go with mini rigs. Walter Abraham says, hey Tim, this is going to be a good one. Choose three figures from each sequel movie to be added to the vintage collection. Uh, Walter, that'll take me a bit of time. I'll tell you what, I'll give you one from each. So from The Force Awakens, I would have Finn in his Stormtrooper outfit. From The Last Jedi, I would have Luke in his Jedi training outfit. That's a difficult one. I don't really want too many figures from that film, to be honest, because the outfits aren't really that great, you know? it's that's I think that's why one of the reasons the, the figures didn't sell. The, the, the outfits for the, for the characters just aren't different enough from The Force Awakens or interesting enough. From The Rise of Skywalker, oh, I'd probably say uh, General Pride 
or Old Lando. There you go. Tickle says, hey, Boss Bounty, are they going to re-release all of the previous Vintage Collection figures? I don't think they'll ever re-release all of them. They will release a substantial amount of them because it's easy for them to do uh, like they have been doing. But they will get a point where there'll be a figure where that just isn't good enough anymore to be re-released. It'll be too aged. Uh, so I don't believe that they'll release them all. But, you know, they'll get through quite a good good amount of them. <laughs> Hamish Lipscomb says, Hey Boss Bounty, great Star Wars videos always. Thank you very much, Hamish. Question for next week. Do you think Hasbro, since they are trying to complete the original 96 in 3.75 inch vintage collection, do you think we'll see Sim Alu, the Imperial Dignitary, in that line? If they want to complete the 96, then he has to be part of it. I think he'll probably be one of the last because he's going to need an all new sculpt, essentially. There is, there is not a decent enough version or a version of that figure at all out there. I, I think there's other Imperial dignitaries, but maybe not Sim Alu. The rumors are out there that we're getting the Emperor this year, so maybe Sim Alu will follow shortly, maybe beginning of next year, hopefully. But yeah, they'll have to do it at some point. All right then guys, it's been fun this week. Great questions, and please leave your questions for next week's episode. It's been great. Thank you very much for watching, and we shall see you on the next one.